All right, everybody. So I'm very excited to finally bring you my early in-game Arclash Sorcerer build. As you can see, I'm level 60, and I've just unlocked tier 4 Torment. There you go. And it was pretty easy. Now, this build is very, very tanky. The DPS is decent. But more importantly, it's very easy to make, and it's very, very easy to play. And it doesn't require any extra renowned Paragon points. I've seen a couple content creators kind of try to pull the wool over your eyes with that little trick. But no, this is level 60. You do need all the skill points from Renown, but you don't need, you know, like the 40 hours of grinding it takes to get all the Renown Paragon points. So be aware of that. But when you further, I do want to mention that for these types of videos, I do like to go really into detail. You know, give you alternatives, explain why things are chosen. So there's not going to be any actual gameplay footage in this video, but if you do want to see gameplay, there will be gameplay linked in the comments and the description below. So go check that out. So let's go ahead and first give a quick overview of the basic gameplay, you know, how your skill rotation works, get into it. Now the way you play this build is very, very simple. Generally, you just want to teleport into the group of enemies, cast your Frost Nova, and start slapping away with Arc Wash, and then use your Ice Armor and your Flame Shield as necessary. Now, a couple of details to note here is that one, teleport is actually a really good defensive cooldown. If you've got it and you get stunned or frozen or anything like that, you can actually get out with teleport. Like a lot of people underestimate how good of a defensive cool, uh, cooldown teleport is. Just keep that in mind. Now for ice armor, obviously this is pretty basic. Just gives you some barrier, but it does regenerate barrier as you attack. It's a very good offensive defensive cooldown, if that makes sense. And then you know, getting the flame shield. You know, be careful about wasting this one because this is by far your best defensive cooldown. It is 2.4 seconds of literal immunity. Cannot be understated just how strong this is. You can't get knocked back. You can't get stunned. You can't take damage. You can't get you know, any sort of crowd control effect. You just have 2.4 seconds of complete and total immunity. Just be aware of that and treat it carefully because this will save you more than you can count. Now, moving on finally to unstable currents, our ultimate. Obviously, this is just great for acquiring a pack of elites or a screen full of monsters. But if you are fighting a boss, make sure you save unstable currents from when you get a stagger on the boss, that's when you do the most damage, and you can just sit there and slap away, you know, without the boss, you know, attacking back. It'll give you a really, really, really big damage, and this is where most of your boss DPS comes from. So definitely don't waste your cooldown too early. Just keep that in mind. And that's pretty much it. Game, this build plays very simply. So let's go ahead and move on to the skill tree. Now, if you're just looking to copy paste the skill tree, first of all, for our enchantments, we're running Firebolt. And fire a ball and then i'll just sort of quickly scroll down here you can pause and copy and paste as you see fit and now let's get into the details starting with the basic skills and we'll work our way down so first of all arc lash obviously this is our main skill five points in this and then out the glinting arc lash this is very good the cooldown reduction here is just too good to pass up flickering arc lash can be good in the early game but I would switch over to it pretty quickly, right? You really want that cooldown reduction. Now, Firebolt, it's literally just there to be able to activate the enchantment, which is also only there to get access to lines such as damage to burning enemies and reduce damage taken from the burning enemies, right? All that's really there for. It's very easy to get those lines on the Paragon board. So that's why we're taking advantage of that. And that's it for basics. Moving down to core skills, we've got five points of Firebolt. This is, again, for the enchantment only actually casting fireball on your skill bar this is just really great mob clearing it does quite a bit of damage and it can't be an extra bit of damage during bosses when it summons minions you group all the enemies around the boss before you kill them give you a nice chunk of extra damage also got one point in charge bolts and then out the destructive charge bolts this is mainly for survivability against packs of elites really really good 20 percent reduced damage dealt by them very very good that's really all it's for you don't really need this you can take it off if you want but i found it was worth having and it kind of Kept me alive sometimes when I otherwise would have died. Now, moving on to our defensive skills, we have, uh, well, literally all of them. But starting off with Flame Shield, I've got five points in this, and then out the Shimmering Flame Shield. The Health Restore is just too good to pass up. And it also helps that Mystical Flame Shield does literally nothing for us because we do not spend any mana at all. Now, and then moving on to Teleport, I've got one point in this, and then out the Shimmering. 30% damage reduction is just too good to pass up. Now, I will say, Five points in Flame Shield versus five points in Teleport. It's kind of up to you. I found it was worth the extra 0.4 seconds of immunity on Flame Shield rather than the cooldown reduction on Teleport. 
especially since the teleport already gets a good chunk of cooldown reduction from enhanced teleport you know, up to three seconds. I didn't find it was really worth it, but the 0.4 seconds of immunity saved me more times than I could count, to be honest. You got one point in ice armor. It's just really not worth putting any more points in ice armor than this, to be honest. None of the passes are very useful for us, and I generally feel I've generated enough barrier even without it. I suppose if you really want to, you could take some points out of like flame shield and put more in the ice armor, but I don't think it's worth it personally. And finally, we have Frost Nova. Five points in this. Out to Mystical Frost Nova. Obviously, this is our source of vulnerable. And again, we don't need mana anyway, so there's no real choice there. If you want one point in Elemental Attunement, this is kind of hard to pass up, to be honest. Even though the chance isn't very high, sometimes your cooldowns will get reset and it can save you. Three points in Glass Cannon. You have that much tank on this build. Take the extra 18% damage, it's worth it. Even though you take 9% more damage, doesn't even matter. <laughs> and then moving on to our Conjuration skills, we don't actually have any skills here, but you have three points in Conjuration Mastery. You might be a little confused, but I'll explain it in just a second. One point in Align the Elements. This is just a free damage reduction. Uh, you don't really care too much about it though, but the main thing here is getting uh, Protection, which every time you use a cooldown, which is all your skills except for Arclash, by the way, you get a Barrier. Now, the reason we're using Conjuration Mastery it's actually to interact with our ultimate every time you know you, you cast a shock skill when you're using unstable currents you cast a random core conjuration mastery skill this does work with conjuration mastery any of the lightning spheres that you summon during your ultimate does count for conjuration mastery this is a good chunk of extra damage and it's completely free basically very much worth it in my opinion just keep that in mind but this is entirely up to you this is basically only helpful during your ultimate right moving on two points in icy veil barriers last longer <laughs> not much else to say that it discharge honestly crackling energy just kind of sucks to be honest as far as i can tell i tried messing with it a little bit didn't find it was worth investing any more to it than that but shocking impact is very 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 good you still a lot of stunning on this build three damage hard to pass up and finally for our ultimate again unstable currents one point here to get Prime Unstable Currents. 25% attack speed is obviously too good to pass up. Crackling Energy, again, didn't find worth investing into. And then we put one point in Course in Currents to get access to Electrocution. <laughs> more, more survivability, what can I say? And finally, for our passive here, we want Fierce Mastery. More, more damage taken. I mean, more damage dealt, less damage taken. And even more when you get crit. It's hard to pass that up. But as you can see, we've got tons of damage reduction, and you, it's really hard to die if you're playing uh, you know, properly. Just don't let that go to your head and play super sloppy, right? And that's pretty much it for the skill tree. So finally, for all that, let's get into the Paragon board, which I'll try to make a bit more brief, all right? Get into it. All right, so for the Paragon boards, we're actually going to keep things pretty simple and short here because... It would just get too long otherwise, right? Now for the starting board, basically just follow my path here and then come up here and you're going to want the Territorial Glyph here. Damage to close enemies, but more importantly, 10% damage reduction against close to enemies, right? Make sure you get these Dex Nodes here to get that activated and then work your way up to get your second board. For your second board, you're going to be running, running, running the Burning Instinct board. Make sure it is in this alignment right here. You want the Burning Instinct node up here because you don't actually care about it. What we're looking for on this board here is actually the damage reduction from enemies that are burning and damage to burning enemies. This is where that Fire Bolt enchantment comes in. And then for the Glyph here, I'm running Flame Feeder. This is just more damage to burning enemies. Now, just keep in mind, this is definitely just sort of good enough to get you to, to Torment, right? You're going to probably change this board for something else. And you're going to need to change this around to get really get into end game, right? This is just to get you to torment, just good enough, right? Keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and move on to gear, right? Let's get into it. All right, so I'm not going to be talking about legendary aspects in this section. If you want to know about those, that'll be in the next section of the video. But first, let's talk about uniques. First of all, there are no mandatory uniques for this build. I'm using this pair of unique pants. This is very nice, essentially just extra crowd control utility. Enemies that die while frozen have a 16% chance to unleash a Frost Nova. 
very good pairs extremely well with the fireball enchantment but not mandatory at all it's just nice to have as for other uniques to look out for while you're leveling there's a helmet that gives you plus four to all skills and some stats very good there's a chest piece that makes it your that modifies your teleport so when you essentially teleport to a group of enemies it will suck in nearby enemies and it will stun them this is really good for our build keep an eye out for that and finally the best unique you could possibly find for this build is the pair of boots that essentially gives you critical strike chance based off of your movement speed this because critical strike chance is one of the most important stats for this build right and let's go ahead and get into that so for your stats on this build your primary stat is going to be cooldown reduction now unfortunately i've only got 14 percent, but you probably want to aim for like 25 30 percent if you can and then your next most important stat is going to be critical strike chance as you see i'm sitting here at 23 percent. then finally your next most important stat is going to be attack speed and basic skill attack speed and that's pretty much it for your most important stats so those are the things you want to keep out uh you know you know look out for the most on your gear after that make sure you've got 255 dexterity and a good chunk of intelligence you need the dexterity for your paragon board passives specifically for the damage reduction on um i remember what it's called but you, you use it for your paragon board basically now for your jewels you're going to want rubies in your armor schools in your you know your jewelry and and I, I meant gems right gems in your gear and finally for your weapons you're going to want topaz i think it's probably i think it's the best option but there might be something better but i've been using topaz and it seems like to be the best you want to go ahead and mention that for your weapon you do ideally want a one-handed wand and a focus i couldn't find a good one while leveling so i'm using the staff that i found and it's good enough for me it had basic skill damage had a good roll so i stuck with this for quite a long time and that's pretty much it but ideally you do want to have one-handed wand and staff because they have a 1.2 base attack speed which is much better than a 1.0 base attack speed right and then that's going to be pretty much it for this section. There's not really much else to talk about. So now let's go ahead and start talking about the legendary aspects in the next section. All right. So actually for this build, most of the important aspects come straight from the codex. So you don't actually have to get lucky and pick them up in the field, but they obviously they will have lower rolls from the codex. So definitely look out for them to drop, but let's go ahead and get into those. First of all, it's going to be basic skills to gain percent attack speed. As you can see, I've got a pretty decent roll here, uh, but this is straight from the codex. Make sure you put it on your amulet because it does get a bonus when it's on your amulet. I believe it also works for the weapon as well if you have a two-handed weapon, but ideally you want a one-handed weapon, so put this on your amulet. Next is going to be damage to basically crowd-controlled enemies. This is very good for us. Tons of damage. Now, this is a this is not one that drops, but you also don't need it. While Unstable Currents is not active, the Shock Seals have a percent chance to trigger a free cast from it. And why this is good is because it's a free cast. So if you remember in our passive skill, we have a passive that gives us a barrier when we cast a skill, right? So this does count for that. It does activate that, does give us a barrier. And, you know, we cast out some random spells once in a while. Very good. Keep an eye out for this. It's not mandatory, but it is very, very nice to have. And this is another aspect from the Codex. You gain percent increased armor for four seconds. When you deal any form of damage, stacking up to X percent. This is very good. It's just a bunch of free armor for us. You stack this up pretty, pretty easily. We'll definitely put this on something. Now, uh, this is a, another good one from the Codex. Basic skills grant 20% damage reduction for X seconds. Space 2, but... We only use basic uh, att attack, so, you know, this may as well read have 20% damage reduction, right? It's very strong for us for this build. Definitely put this on something. And then another one from the Codex. Skills deal up to X% percent increased damage based on your primary resource available when cast. We don't actually use mana on this build. We are always full on mana. So this is always the full percentage in case, you know, in case of the Codex and print, that's 10%. And this is just something I have randomly it's just it's nice to have just some extra movement speed and uh, a little bit of quality of life and again pretty much all of these come from the codex now there are a couple obviously a couple good ones you can find in the field but nothing super mandatory that's pretty much all you need right there basically everything from the codex except for obviously the unstable currents legendary aspect right uh and yeah pretty much it 
I don't, I don't want to get too in depth on this section because there's so many aspects that could be useful, could be helpful. Uh, but these are the ones you really want the most. And then you can sort of fill in the rest as you desire. Anyways, that'll be it for this video. So this is my first time making a Diablo uh, build video. It's been a while since I made a build video like this. So let me know if there's anything I missed, anything you need to know. Just ask me in the comments and I'll try to get that answered. And I'll put any... I missed in the pinned comment and again as a reminder if you want to see some actual gameplay footage of this build I'll link some footage in the description and the comments below. It'll probably be level 73 dungeons That's the minimum for torment And again, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you guys in the next video until then Take it easy and have a good one everybody